Welcome to this special edition of the Podcast Engineering Show. My name is Chris Curran. Normally on this show, I interview guests about their equipment and their workflow, and we get into the technical aspects of podcast production. And actually, some weeks, I just summarize a bunch of my daily goody blog posts, which you can subscribe to as well on podcastengineeringschool.com, and the link is in the show notes. This episode you're about to hear is a teaser for all the technical track presentations that will happen this August 2019 at Podcast Movement in Orlando, Florida. So you're you're about to hear me actually speak briefly with each and every technical track speaker about their presentations, uh, except Dave Jackson. I think he was filming a movie in New Zealand and he was not available. So, uh, but you know, Dave Jackson, School of Podcasting. You probably know him already. You've probably, you know, hugged him and broken bread with him and all that. So um, so at Podcast Movement, I will be introducing all these speakers as well on stage because I'm going to be emceeing the technical track as well. So Podcast Movement, just a reminder, is August 13th through 16th, 2019. And there's still plenty of time to get your ticket, but I would get it soon. Uh, Podcast Movement is just a great event. And a little piece of trivia, I've been to every Podcast Movement conference that ever was. I went to the first one, and I've gone to every one. So I don't know. I guess I'm proud of that, right? Why should I not be? Okay, so all the speakers and that I talked to in this episode, uh, you can find their names and, and the titles of their presentations in the show notes of this episode. And at the end... Uh, I'm going to go last because at the end, I'm going to give you a teaser about the talk that I am going to give at Podcast Movement. And so I just want to mention quickly a couple of announcements. June 25th, the next semester of Podcast Engineering School starts. So if you're interested in that, let me know. And also the fall semester of Podcast Engineering School starts September 17th. And uh, we will also have a booth at Podcast Movement. So you can stop by our booth And hang out with us and chat with us for Podcast Engineering School. There, it'll be a lot of fun. Thank you in advance to Ralph M. Rivera from Podcasters Toolbox for sending me audio introductions for all the speakers that you're going to hear in this episode. So you're going to hear Ralph audio, right? Hashtag Ralph audio? No? Okay. Uh, Also, Podcasters Lounge. I don't know if you heard about this. I'm live streaming every Wednesday evening for two hours We're calling it the Podcaster's Lounge. It's a great place for us to hang out and just talk about anything, really. But usually we end up back at podcasting. But that's a great live stream. Every Wednesday night, uh, link in the show notes. And last thing is the music that I play at the very end of this episode. So the outro music I'm going to play is actually a piece of audio that I played. I played the guitar and I played the drums And I recorded it about 25 years ago. And I don't know. I recently found it and I listened to it. It was interesting. And it's got a really pretty awesome chorus, like a like a mosh part kind of thing. Anyway, so there you go. So let's uh, let's do it. Hi, I'm Ralph M. Rivera of Podcasters Toolbox. You're listening to the Podcast Movement 2019 Technical Track Preview on the Podcast Engineering Show. Up first is international speaker and podcasting consultant, Jan Ilunga. Hello, Mr. Jan Ilunga. How are you, sir? I'm doing fantastic, Chris. How about yourself? (laughs) Good. And you're in Helsinki, Finland. Yes, sir, I am. It's so sunny today. It almost feels as if I'm in Orlando, Florida or something. (laughs) I really want to visit Finland. I don't know why. I just really, for some reason, I want to visit Finland. And I think there's a company there. Is it... Oak Sound, they make a couple plugins. I think they're based in Finland, but a lot of companies are based in Finland that I see. Yeah, okay. good question. I'm not familiar with that, but there is the more I kind of hear about some companies or I explore more the Finnish tech scene, the more I realize that there are so many uh, apps, tools that I've used myself. And I'm like, oh, really? They are based like right here in Helsinki or anyways in Finland? Right. I didn't know. And to your point of visiting Finland, I think... Many people have that same kind of interest and desire. And I have to admit that I'm originally from Switzerland. So another country that many people, when hearing about it, they're like, oh, I dream of of visiting Switzerland. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> that's great. So you, ah, oh, that's cool. All right. So you are a podcast consultant and a systems strategist, and you mm-hmm. actually run the Facebook group, which is called Podcast Growth Mastermind. So if anyone listening, go find that group on Facebook and and uh, and join it. Podcast Growth Mastermind, and you, of course, are. Speaking in the technical track at Podcast Movement in Orlando in August, and uh, <laughs> you're you're psyched about it, right? I am. I am super pumped. I'm happy to be back. It's gonna be my third year, my second year in a row speaking. So nice. I'm really really pumped about it. That's right, and I'll get to introduce you. So I'll try and come up with like a couple wacky things when I introduce you to make it fun. <laughs> uh, and your talk is going to be called Podcasting Systems. The three key automated systems podcast hosts and guests need to have in place to scale. So, wow, mm-hmm. systems. You're a systems guy. I like this. I, I think I am, too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think everybody should have a little bit of system guy or system gal in them because I wasn't born one, but the more I've I've been doing things in podcasting, in my business, the more I realized how much systems are useful for many different things, but especially when it comes to consistently creating content, consistently managing your podcast, distribute it, and all these kind of things. Yeah, and it, you know, I was reminded of a quote. It's a it's a personal development quote, but it sort of applies to systems. The quote is something like, Uh, first you create your habits and then your habits create you. Mm, And it's probably the same with systems, right? Absolutely. Yes, it's absolutely so. And I realized that when we think about systems, automations, managing projects and these kind of things, oftentimes it sounds almost intimidating. We imagine super sophisticated machines or things like that. And sometimes systems can be complex, but there's also relatively easy steps that once we kind of map them out, we automate them, they're going to allow us to take a good chunk of our podcasting workload off of our shoulders and basically take care of that on autopilot, whether we do things by ourselves or if we have an assistant or a team. So I think it's definitely a topic that it's really, really valuable. And I think everybody who is a podcaster or even People who don't host a podcast but are interviewed as podcast guests should really think about systems and leveraging them. Oh, my God. I need your presentation so much. I want it now. (laughs) I want it in May. (laughs) Oh, God. There's so many things I want to do, and I don't have time. And and I know – yeah, anyway, I'm going to have to somehow manage to to sit in the back of your presentation, but uh, I'll be there anyway, so – Nice. It's going to be great. So what um, what is the main microphone you use when you podcast? Great question. The main one I use, it's actually the one I'm currently using here, is the Samsung Q2U, and it's a dual microphone. So it has a USB connection or an XLR connection, and I use the XLR connection. Okay. And, and so have you given... A, a name to your mic? Have you named your mic like a little pet name or anything? <laughs> Actually, I have to admit that I haven't <laughs> named my mic. And I have to admit, Chris, I hosted a podcasting workshop at the University of Helsinki something like two years ago at the time of this recording. And I brought all of the different mics I have. And now that you asked me if I named my mic, I was like, well, <laughs> if I were to name all of my microphones, I would be like, wait, what's your name again? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> oh, I know. I, I've been asking that question just to catch people off guard. It's a really dumb question. Oh, it's. I like it. Or, you know, I may end up doing, I don't know if you had many siblings. I don't, but I know families, large families where maybe your mom wants to scold you, but somehow she starts to name all of your siblings <laughs> and then she gets to you. So I think I would probably do that with the mics accidentally, of course. <laughs> oh. That is really funny, Jan. Well, this is awesome, man. I'm happy we got to chat. I'm looking forward to seeing you again at Podcast Movement and uh, introducing you for your your awesome talk. So thanks, man. Thank you, Chris. And thank you, everybody who tuned in. And I hope to actually meet all of you in person at Podcast Movement. That's right. Everyone plan on after Jan's talk, we're going to rush the stage. We're going to surround him and we're going to Tell him all of our names and then quiz him and make him repeat our names. 
which you won't be <laughs> well, able to my do. Ba- <laughs> my background is in communications and I speak five languages, so feel free to actually do that, what Chris just said. <laughs> All right, it's the Jan Ilunga Challenge. Wait, what are the five languages? Well, English, as you may have noticed, I have this funny macaroni accent, and that's because Italian is my mother tongue. And then I speak French, some German, and a little bit of Finnish as well. So feel free to approach me and tell me your name, whether it's a French name, English name, Italian name, or something else. (laughs) Well, since you're in Finland, how do you say hello in Finnish? Well, now that for me it's almost evening, you could say huva ilta, that it's good evening. Oh. Or you could say huva paiva, which is basically a uh, good day. Okay, huva paiva. All right, we're going to learn some Finnish in podcast movement. All right, Jan, thanks, brother. See you then. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Up next on the Podcast Engineering Show Podcast Movement 2019 Technical Track Preview is Steve Stewart, whose team provides podcast production for busy podcasters. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Hello, Steve Stewart from Steve Stewart Podcast Productions. Hello, Chris Curran, my friend and fellow podcast editor, engineer. Uh, graduate of podcast engineering school. Yeah, I think I got by with a D minus. And you're also the sensei of the podcast editors club on Facebook. If you sensei. Then I am. <laughs> ah what a wonderful group of for, for editing and stuff and um, but still, you know, I got to be honest, slightly weird that the group doesn't really allow talking about anything like pre-production or microphones. It's it's only like post-production and editing, right? <laughs> well, it's by design. I understand. It's for podcast editors and podcast editors might be podcasters, but they may not be. So that's why the group only talks about post-production and not content creation. So you are going to be with the incomparable Daryl Darnell at Podcast oh. Movement in Orlando. And yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> you're going to be your title of your your guys' session and I know that's proper uh um grammar. <laughs> your guys' session. <laughs> Where's the grammar girl? <laughs> oh god. Anyway, the title is <laughs> Five steps to building a sought after podcast production company. And you That's right. have a, a really good production company, and so does Daryl. And yeah, so you guys are gonna what what are you guys gonna be talking about? Well, by comparison, my production company pales in comparison to what Daryl's done. Back in December, he scored, I guess you'd say, because <laughs> that's proper English too. He <laughs> scored his one hundredth active podcast client. Right. And that's a huge milestone for somebody to build a company that big. And I know there's companies that can do more, but Daryl's journey from where he started, he, you know, he's an indie podcaster like we are, and he built this thing. And and I was really intrigued by some of the things he shared right after that. He, he wrote this really long post in the, in the Podcast Editors Club Facebook group, and it was really detailed and had some really great points. And that's what we're going to talk about are these things, these these pieces of his journey to getting from when he started to over 100 clients now for uh, Pro Podcast Solutions, his, his uh, podcast production company. Yeah, and Daryl's a great guy, and his company is a really good company. I've, I've talked with him about it. He's been on my show. You've been on my show. And the way, he's, the way he structures his company is just, it's really smart. And he, like you said, he's learned so much. So it's, it, I'm, I'm, I, I want to attend that. That's a session I want to attend is to, so I can hear... More about Daryl's, uh, how he built his company. Because a lot of people these days, they want to become podcast editors and they want to, you know, most want to do it on the side, but some do want to build it into a full-time thing. I mean, who who wouldn't want to do that, right? It's a lot of fun. You have fun doing it, right, Steve Stewart? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And what Daryl has had to do is kind of conform to what his clients want. And that's that's a big part of his journey is... You know, when do you add on show notes and this whole audiograms thing that came on and, you know, he's, he's not doing all one herded shows himself. How do you pick editors to work with? How do you find people who can write show notes for your clients? How do you quality check? He's got project managers. He hires people to be project managers. That's how big this thing has gotten. Right. And if you know anything about Daryl Darnell, he's still, you know, this really, uh, introverted, quiet, <laughs> thoughtful, purposeful guy yeah. And he's just like you and me. 
you know, we could just sit there and talk all day long. He's not some, you know, big shot CEO when the dude has over a hundred clients. I mean, that's, that's just amazing. Yeah. He really is a good guy. You could tell he's just good grassroots kind of guy who just wants to do good work and, and, and make a, and make a good living from it. So it's really nice. Yeah. And if you want to know a little, little uh, behind the scenes secret here, he didn't want to do this session. <laughs> oh, really? I had to convince him to do it. Yes. I, I pushed him to do this. And he finally thought it over and he's like, yeah, this would be a good session for podcast movement. So I'm really glad that we're able to bring this to this session because it's, it's something I don't think anybody has really presented on before. We've talked about making podcasting a business or podcast production as a business, but I mean, how do you grow this business to you know, all the, it's really the, the steps that he took to get to a hundred clients, which is really interesting. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. All right. So that's going to be an awesome session in Orlando in August at podcast movement, uh, couple quick questions for you, Mr. Steve Stewart, um, mm -hmm. the sensei of the Podcast Editors Club. Uh, what is your main microphone for podcasting? Well, see, I don't do a podcast anymore, but I still use the microphone that I was using when I was podcasting all the way through 2015, which is the ATR 2100. All right. And I have to ask you the ridiculous question, which I thought would be a funny question to ask people but has turned into a catastrophe. Uh, have you named your microphone like with a little pet name? <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> no, I have not. Oh, okay. Now, now I ask it just cause it's so ridiculous, but I was trying to come up with a funny <laughs> question, but anyway, all right. Well, neither have I. <laughs> Sorry about that, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will say my ATR is probably jealous of my Heil Finn sitting over here because the Heil Finn is a sexy beast. But uh, oh, really? You know? Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. It's wait the it's Heil got this, Finn, the Heil Finn. Yeah, I bought one just because it was a really good deal, and it's just so beautiful. It glows blue. You can you know turn on the phantom power, and there's oh. this blue glow that comes out. It's just beautiful. If you look at uh, uh, go to podcastbug.com. Mike Wilkerson has a Volkswagen Beetle that he retrofitted the front end to work as a podcast studio. And he's got four microphone arms that come out and he uses the Heil fins on that thing. And it's just really cool looking, especially, you know, you got the fin look. It, it kind of goes along with the older car look. It's just really neat. Wow. You know what? I I have seen that mic before, but I forgot about it. But that yeah, that's a good looking mic. Yeah. Good right. looking. But, oh really yeah i was gonna say what does it sound like <laughs> is it a condenser <laughs> it's it sound no it still sounds good because it is a heil uh it's not as good as the pr40 at least not for my voice okay. but then again i have to go through an interface if i'm going to use it and i'm right. using the atr 2100 because it's super easy it's plugged in boom i'm done that's right. that's really why and it doesn't sound bad all right steve we'll see you in orlando thank you for sharing what your session is going to be about uh do you have any embarrassing uh, <laughs> details about Daryl Darnell that you want to disclose right now? <laughs> I think I already did. Okay, good. <laughs> he didn't want to do the session, but this is going to be a good session. I think for anybody who's looking to grow their podcast past just the one person doing it all themselves type thing. Right. All right. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Chris. Third on the list on the podcast engineering show, podcast movement, 2019 tech. This is way too long. Too long a title. I'm gonna I'm gonna work on that. Anyway, here's Shannon Martin from Podbean. Hi, Shannon Martin. <laughs> Hi, glad to be here with you. From China. Oh, wait, are you using your VPN connection or no? No, it seems to be working without. So. All right. Yeah, I think I've we'll done see. some sessions with people in China, and it, without the VPN, is it works better? I think. Yes, you just need the VPN if you do like a Google Hangout or something, but usually for Skype and Zoom and for this, it seems to work without, so much better. All right. So you are on a panel at Podcast Movement with the immortal Dave Jackson, the incomparable Mike Dell, <laughs> and the lovely <laughs> Mackenzie Bennett. <laughs> I just made all those things yeah. up on the fly. That was pretty good, right? <laughs> Yeah, I'm in good company. I'm, you know, I feel feel very honored. And your panel is titled "Help Us Help You: Tech Support Tips for Podcasters." So I want to, uh, we'll talk about that in a second. But you're the director of communications for Podbean, and you're often a guest on the the Podbean 
show, right? That Jennifer does, right? Yeah, we tend to interview our, our podcasters about their story and their um, resources and tips and that kind of thing. But occasionally we do what we call the spill the pod beans episode where we talk about company news and that kind of thing. And then I'll join her sometimes for that. Cool. So uh, now for the panel you're going to be doing at Podcast Movement, what kinds of things are you going to talk about in terms of tech support tips for podcasters? I think the idea behind it is really to help people when they have a problem and need to reach out to the support team at their hosting provider to know um, kind of the best information to give so that they can get the answer they need. Um, you know, the details that sometimes when people, you know, email support, call support, live chat, whatever the company offers, sometimes they it, there needs to be a lot of questions back and forth um, for the tech team to ascertain you know, what the actual problem is. So trying to, you know, save them a little time, shortcut some of that, um, and just answer, also answer a lot of audience questions about any issues they've encountered or, you know, the kind of support that they need. Yeah, that's kind of a tricky situation, like emailing support or, you know, getting support from your hosting company, because a lot of times there's like, sometimes weird things happen and they're just weird, but also sometimes people... <laughs> It something is obvious, but they just don't see it. Like that's happened to me. Like I'll be on the website and I just don't see something and I'll be like, where is this? And then they'll support will write back and be like, oh, it's right here. So you, you guys probably have to deal with a lot of that, right? Just kind of simple questions that of people just wanting to know where things are or what to do, right? Yeah. And it's natural because I mean, especially a lot of our podcasters, it's really new to them. And we've made our, our user interface. Part, that's been a huge um, part of what we've tried to do. From That's actually why Podbean started. Our uh, owners used a, a number of other online tools for content creation, wanted there to be something simple for podcasters. So a lot of people are really just starting out. They're very nervous. Um, so we don't mind, you know, the, the basic kind of questions. But um, it's, a, it's a real skill. I work closely with, I'm, I do the tech support directly, but I work really closely with our team. I help them resolve issues that they've had difficulty resolving or, um, you know, something that's sort of escalated or just review overall what's been going on what kind of issues we're seeing, what requests people are making and, you know, a lot of the communication stuff. But um, yeah, you get a wide range of inquiries to tech support for sure. Right. Yeah. All right. So you're going to be on the panel. It's going to be awesome. And now what is what is the main microphone you use when you're on uh, a podcast? So I actually use a Logitech USB uh, headset, and um, I it was recommended to me by podcast. I can't remember which podcast group on Facebook, but I was I've been interviewed on a lot of podcasts, um, stuff about podcasting sometimes, but also because I've uh, lived abroad in a couple of different countries and traveled a lot, and sort of am a location independent digital nomad, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there's a lot of podcasts about that kind of topic that I've been on, uh, and of course I know a lot of podcasters. So I asked uh, for advice and that's the advice that they gave me. It's a really inexpensive um, headset that I got on Amazon and it's worked really well. And I'm in a noisy setting, so I'm always nervous being where I am because I don't have a closet to go into or anything, but um, it's been pretty successful so far. So um, there is a podcasting studio now locally um, too, so that's something that um, I may check out for further interviewing because they have some great tech right yeah and if you ever do more podcasting yourself you definitely uh take the next step up to the next level which would probably be a usb microphone so that'd be good but uh have you actually uh have you named your your headset like a little pet name or anything <laughs> no, I don't have a name for it. <laughs> That's a good one. I'll have to think about it. Um, I should name it something like unmute since when we were talking before recording, I had the mute button on and that's not the first time that's happened. So I should name it unmute so that I never forget. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I've been asking every, I'm going to ask everybody, what have, do you have a name for your mic? I'm, I'm, I surprise him with that question. So that, that's why it was a little wacky question there. Right. All right. Cool. All right. So we'll look forward to seeing you in Orlando, Shannon Martin, and uh, good luck on your panel discussion. Thanks a lot. And I uh, look forward to having a lot of folks there, hopefully, and helping them get their questions answered. Awesome. Uh, hi, it's Ralph again. Um, well, apparently I'm still contractually obligated to say that this is the Podcast Engineering Show Podcast Movement 2019 Technical Track Preview. 
It's way too long a title, I know, but Chris Kern gets what Chris Kern wants. Next up is Sarah Wendell. Enjoy. Hello, Sarah Wendell. How are you? I'm great. How are you, Chris? Good. So you're going to also, in this star-studded episode of podcast movement, technical track speakers, you're doing a talk called Post-Production, Effective Tips and Techniques for a Seamless Edit. And so if people want to meet you and hear your talk, they can come to Podcast Movement in August, which is going to be awesome. Uh, so let's uh, let's just find out from you, what, what are you mainly going to cover in your talk from a high level? Yeah, so uh, last year I gave a talk on beginning uh, tips and techniques, and this year I wanted to expand it a bit because the... Um, the, the people at Podcast Movement just range from people who are beginning their show and have really no idea about editing different ways to people who are, who are pretty advanced, who are considering this one intermediate. And I want to just kind of go a little bit further. You know, a lot of people talk about taking out breaths and ums and repeats and things like that. And I think those are all important, but I think that a lot of people can get hung up on just doing those things and saying, oh, I edited so much because I took out 65 ums from this episode. And... I want to just go a little bit further and talk about things like, hey, if you're on a Skype connection and there's a dropout, how can you work in ways to edit around that or um, use maybe a transcription to find the same wording somewhere else and try to make that flow in? And uh, when you have two different hosts who tend to talk over one another and there's mic bleed, different techniques and tricks that you can use to make that just a little bit more uh, polished rather than hearing staccato edits throughout. Um, and then I work on a show called Astonishing Legends where some of it's scripted and some of it is them just having discussions. So we have a tendency to have a lot of redundancy and how you can essentially produce your show so that you can take out the fluff and just make it sound very consistent. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I never thought of that, that you could actually transcribe it and then search for like words or phrases and and if you missed a phrase somewhere although i will say that's a lot of work to just re like replace a word or two <laughs> but but it works i'm sure <laughs> well and sometimes um, i mean depending on how bad your skype dropouts are sometimes it's more than that and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't but that's a trick that i've learned from years of doing audiobook records and if somebody has uh we're recording and they've used the wrong phrase or the wrong word the first thing that i do is search the pdf and say okay is this somewhere else where i can cut it into the into place and again sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't but i just want to open people's minds up to the possibilities of different things that they can do in editing to make things work for them yeah, that oh, it's that's brilliant. I mean, this is a lot of what we talk about on on my show, this show. So, uh, and we really love going deep into all the like little little known tips and tricks and stuff that you would never even hear in your life if you you know if you didn't attend a talk like yours. So, that's going to be awesome. So, uh, and I'm going to obviously introduce you there. I'm going to be emceeing that room, so uh, that'll be fun and wonderful. Yeah. So, any. Um, is there any sort of target person that might be best to attend your your talk? I mean, I, I hope that there's something for anybody who wants to just pop in, but I'm really trying to gear it towards people who have a little bit more of a technical background and can work their way around their editing system. Um, I personally work in Pro Tools, but I know that especially with people at Podcast Movement, people work in all kinds of different software. So it's not geared towards any one person who uses one type of software over another, but just somebody who can, um, who's at the point in editing where they can just be a little bit more creative with what they're doing. Right. Yeah, that's a good distinction because like the 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 new person who's just getting into it and is like, ooh, what is a DAW? And ooh, I open the software and where do I put my audio? Like the beginner isn't really ready for these sort of like intermediate and advanced tricks, right? Because they they don't have the basics down. So that makes sense. Yeah, I think I think it would probably overwhelm them. I think, and that's why after last year, I said, okay, we've done that. We've talked about these, these little things. How do you get rid of a pee pop? And how do you take out an um? And how do you cover a breath? And now I just want to dig a little bit deeper and just kind of explore further. And I will say for people who already have quite a bit of audio knowledge and, you know, even people who might be considered advanced in terms of uh, being a podcast engineer and, and maybe some, you know, I would consider all the 
folks who've graduated my school in this category, there's still these little tricks and tips out there that, you know what I mean? Like, you, like it's, it's, it's almost strange how you can come across a little tip that you hadn't ever heard before in, in years. And right. And it just makes a difference. So. Oh, absolutely. And I've had my primary background is in audio post-production working in film and TV. So I've had years of ADR editing and dialogue editing, where I've had to do exactly that, where you have an actor who's replacing a line, maybe, and if it's not um, if it's not timed correctly, you have to go in and splice and edit and take out little bits of of words, maybe your sibilance or cutting in on, um, uh, on on certain parts of words to make it work. And that's exactly what I bring to this: is thinking about things like, well, you know, they repeated something, but their inflection is totally different. Well, maybe you don't have to cut in at the beginning of the word. Maybe you can cut in, um, you know, on the T or, or on, on a P or something like that to make it more seamless and yeah. just getting people to think about it in a different way. Yeah. So I think you're going to have to be on a full episode of my show at some point, if, <laughs> if, if you'd prefer, because there's like a million things I want to ask you right now <laughs> and we don't have time. So uh, anyway, it'll be great to meet you at Podcast Movement in August and everyone listening. This is another great session on the technical track that you can attend and really, I mean, I don't know. I attend these events and I always learn so much. It's like, I can't even imagine not attending these events these days, right? Because it, it just puts me professionally in a, like, five steps up on the staircase of, of, of professionality, so... Oh, absolutely. And when you work in a room, I work in a room by myself most of the time, so just being able to talk to people and, and hear different techniques and, um, and, and just, you know, interact with other people. Some days <laughs> yeah. you learn so you learn so much than just kind of sitting in your room and just Googling things one off. <laughs> yeah. All right, Sarah Wendell, thank you so much. We'll see you in August. Thanks, Chris. Looking forward to it. And the podcast engineering show podcast movement, 2019 technical track preview continues next up, Nick Dunkerley from Hindenburg. A little bit of trivia about Nick. Nick lives on a boat. He doesn't have the slightest clue about Shakespeare. And I also caught him making out with my wife at PodFest 2019. Not quite over that yet. Anyway, here he is. Hello, Nick Dunkerley. How are you, sir? I'm very well. Thank you very much, Chris. How Mr. are you doing Cre yourself? Mr. Creative Director of Hindenburg. That's right. It is right. It's very true. Everyone knows the software Hindenburg. It's a multi-track DAW. It's awesome. You uh, you've been with the company for a long time, and you're actually well. You you were a guest on my show, but I don't think it's come out yet. It's going to come out soon, though, Nick. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. And just to um, it might not be a correction, but yes, I have been with the company for a long time because I founded it. Um. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> it's just clarifying slightly yeah yeah it no, is no, my company good. well it's not mine alone but you know i was kind of there when we started totally so the so, title you know, in that yeah go well, ahead uh, I'm just going back because we we never get to talk anymore we never talk <laughs> you never call <laughs> <laughs> you don't call me anymore <laughs> you don't call me anymore you've changed chris <laughs> Oh, uh, no, it's just to say that with the whole thing that you're seeing with Hindenburg is uh, kind of a, a, my brainchild because I don't like computers very much, but I love sound engineering. Right. Yeah, we had a great conversation. That episode's going to come out soon. So, and we're also going to oh, yeah. uh, hang out at Podcast Movement in August in Orlando. Yes, and looking forward to that. Your session is titled Painting Stories with Sound, Podcast Editing for Beginners. So that sounds good. I mean, a lot of beginners come to these events, so it's it's a great chance for you to explain what Hindenburg can do. So what, what are some of the things you're going to be talking about there? Well... Do you general. remember how much time I've, I've got? <laughs> well, the thing is... <laughs> depends on how much time I've got. No, um, I can't remember. I forgot the program. Is this embarrassing? It is a little bit. Anyway, no, uh, what I'm going to be doing is giving a short introduction to how you as a podcaster can use Hindenburg, obviously. Uh, so we'll be going through how you can uh, record yourself, record a guest how you can organize your material, 
how you can do some basic editing and how you can publish it. All that, if all goes well, it can be done really quickly. And the the thing about painting the stories with sound is a, a bit more comprehensive, really, because uh, we often do talk about what software can do to save your recording. But what I really like to do is to go out and try to explain how you can avoid that by actually recording it uh, in a really nice way in the first place. So it's a few tips and tricks on how you, uh, some uh, microphone techniques and some interviewing techniques. And it all sounds immensely boring uh, <laughs> if you're just talking about the technical side. And as I was saying before, I don't, I don't like computers. I don't like technical stuff when it comes to it. And really um, the best sounding interviews, well, actually when you get really bad sound out of an interview, it's, seldom has anything to do with the equipment. Mm. It very often has to do with what's in between your ears. Mm. And it, it's, it's a question of, um, I, 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 t I like to say that being a good radio person is probably the most embarrassing thing in the entire world. <laughs> and the reason for that is you, you have to set... The, uh, the scene, so to speak, when you're doing an interview, you have to take control of, uh, of it. So if you're interviewing someone, you have to tell them, when, I'm really happy that you want to do this interview with me, but we just can't do it in this location because your office sounds horrible. We have to move. Uh, and all those kind of things, are, especially if you're uh, British or uh, um, you, you might be better at it in, in the States, but here we're like, oh, I'm terribly sorry. And so we're always a big excuse for ourselves. And we, we, we don't want to um, put the person that we're interviewing in, in a kind of at the spot. But that's not really the case because whoever you're going to be interviewing, they always want themselves to sound best possible. So if you tell them, well, could we go outside? Because I find a lovely little spot where we could sit in the garden and do this interview instead. And they'll just go, yeah, sure, why not? And that really doesn't matter who you're interviewing. Well, in most cases. Right. So it's stuff like that. It's, it's, the, it's the embarrassment of trying to set things in a particular way. Uh, often you'll find people taking their headphones off because they feel silly. Small things like that. Or right. they... They have a, 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 a tiny little uh, reverse, uh, what do you call the small microphones that you can put on your shirt? Oh, the lavaliers. The expression. Exactly. They'll use them because they look pretty. And so, well, they sound horrible. Right. You know, you, you need to put a microphone into the face. Well, but, okay, we'll take a microphone, but we'll just put it on the table then. <laughs> That's not going to work. Right. It really isn't. So there's a million small things that you can you can do if you think about it. Is, which means that when you get home, you're not going to have that echoey sound uh, on the interview. Or you're not going to have an AC running in the background or stuff like that. So it's just going to make your life a lot easier. Yeah, that's great. Did and that make is, any sense, Chris? Yeah, yeah. This is going to be a great presentation because, like you said, you're not only going to, you know, show basically, in, you know, from a high level how to use Hindenburg and go through the various stages of production, but you're also going to talk about avoiding some of those big mistakes that'll just ruin any podcast regardless of what software you're using so this is sounds like a, it's going to be a fun talk i hope so and All the right. painting sounds part of it and getting back to that one is because at the end of the day you know as, as a sound person myself i love listening to a well orchestrated piece of audio now i'm not saying all uh, podcasters uh, have a would even like to do that because often a conversation is just a conversation and that's fine. Right. But very often for me as a listener, I just love listening to something that's been slightly more produced. Right. So you have a little bit of ambience and you're using a bit of music and you know, you're know you just playing around with the sound just to make it interesting and involving. Totally. Yeah. And, and, and so much of that stuff is so easy to do in Hindenburg. I really love it. So, uh, Nick, what is your main microphone when you record any audio yourself or podcast? <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, you always do this. I, just talk, <laughs> I can't remember. I can't remember. Well, what are you talking uh, to do right now? It's you tell me. I told you last time. It's a, oh. it's a Electro Voice. Uh, RE20. I actually told you and you said... I read, that's the one, that's the one I'm recording yeah, the, into. I actually love this microphone. 
it's really cool. Right? Yeah, I'm going back through my notes. So so what was it again? I'm using a Electrovoice uh, RE20? I'll tell you in a sec. Yeah, yeah, RE20. <laughs> Electrovoice RE20. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I need to call you to get <laughs> advice on what the hell I'm using. So, And if I was in the field, I would... I would use uh, another Electrovoice, actually. The something... It's an Electrovoice 635A. Oh, 635A. Have you ever heard of it? No. I'm going to look it up. Okay. Well, the thing is, the Electrovoice 635A is the microphone that we used at the Danish National Broadcasting. And the thing about that is, it's a small, dynamic microphone. So you can have it in your handbag to be honest. And it's multi-purpose, so you can record with it anywhere, and at the same time, you can build a house with it. <laughs> it's really, really rugged. You can, I, you know, I've seen journalists travel with that thing for 20 years, and it's just always been lying around in the bottom of a bag somewhere. You pull it out, plug it in, and it works. And because it's a dynamic microphone, you don't have all the the fuss that you have with the condenser microphones. And I really do not recommend that you use condenser microphones in the field anyway. Right. Um, so it's, it's just a, it's, it's a fairly cheap, really rugged and well-sounding microphone. Yeah, I just pulled it up on the screen. I and Now I do remember seeing it on TV. It's an old mic, right? It's really old. It's, it must be 40 years old, something like that. You can still get them. Right? Yeah. Looks great. So now you, you're you using an Electrovoice RE20. I'm already laughing before I ask this question. Uh, have have <laughs> yeah. you given a name to your microphone, like a pet name to your RE20, Nick? <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you do that? Oh, God. Have you got names? Oh, come on, Chris. Give I me act- the names for your, your favorite microphones. What do you, what do you call I them? do not. And here's the thing. I was just you trying see. to come up with a silly question to have fun with for this episode. <laughs> 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 oh, God. All right. Let's I just move I, on. <laughs> well, I think we should we should probably come up with it. It's, it's, a, it's a good question. I'm not quite sure anyone's actually ever done that. I know, and I can't think of a good name either. I was trying to think, like, what would you call your microphone? You know, Bessie? No. What, yeah, exactly. What would you call it? Would you call it a, a, a is it a girl? Or is it, I'm not, yeah, has Molly? It got a gender? I don't, I don't know. It's, it's a famous, it's a, mo- probably the most popular name for a dog is Molly, but that doesn't sound right. No, not really, no. Trigger? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a horse. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It doesn't matter, Nick. Uh, um, but Nick Dunkerley, creative director at Hindenburg, this is going to be an awesome session you're going to do at Podcast Movement in Orlando in August. I can't wait to see you there. We're going to hang out and uh, let's go out to dinner or something, too. I Because I missed the boat last time in PodFest. You did. I know. You it was were, a nice meal as well. And, and Ralph M. Rivera got to, got to speak to you over dinner. So that's that's something. <laughs> <laughs> they must be so <laughs> proud. <laughs> no, 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 I I love going out to dinner with them when they're in town. Well, when I'm in town. Yeah. We're in the same town, whatever the expression is. That's it. All right. No, but you, definitely, Nick. we're going to do that next time, Chris. Yep, we will do. See you there. we Will do. Have a good one. Up next is a guy that lives in my hometown of Franklin, Tennessee, Marcus DePaula. We're supposed to be having drinks this week, so by the time you hear this, we may both be behind bars. Enjoy. Hey, Marcus DePaula. How are you, brother? (laughs) I'm good, Chris. How are you? Good. So, Marcus, you are an audio engineer, podcast producer, and a website designer based in Franklin, Tennessee, the new home of Ralph M. Rivera. (laughs) Ralph, he gets applause because he deserves it. But anyway, Marcus, that's where you live, Franklin, Tennessee, and... um, you're obviously going to be a speaker uh, on the technical track at the upcoming podcast movement. And the title of your session, oh, wait, let me just mention your website too, because I love the name of your okay. website, meonlylouder.com. Cool. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I love that. I got that from a friend of mine when I was touring. I used to be a touring sound engineer, and he would say, uh, when he got done tuning the sound system, you know, the big sound system for concerts, he would right. say, it sounds like me only louder. So I stole <laughs> oh, that from cool. Him. I got cool. his permission to use it though. Oh, you did? Good. Yeah. So the title of your session is The Most Common Audio Problems in Podcasts and How to Fix Them. So give us uh, give us a little bit 
of a taste of what you're going to be talking about. All right. Well, I there's a lot of podcast uh, advice out there, and I see a, most of it focusing on equipment and not enough of it focusing on technique. So I have edited, you know, hundreds of episodes for my clients, and there are a series of problems that I encounter on a regular basis, and it drives me crazy because so many of them can be fixed with just a little bit of understanding of audio. And, you know, it's, it's a lot for me to ask everyone to become a professional audio engineer like me, but I want to share some of my 24 years of audio engineering, professional audio engineering experience with anyone who is willing to listen to hopefully make podcasts sound a lot better. So that's basically what I'm going to be hopefully doing in that session. That's great. And I'm, I, I'm in the same boat as you. I end up having to train my clients and I, I uh, give a lot of suggestions to people on, on, on a lot of things not to do, like what not right. to do. <laughs> yeah. Audio is a lot harder than you would think. <laughs> oh, come on, Marcus. No, man. Just plug in a <laughs> mic and start your podcast, man. Right. Just start talking. Yeah. Even talking is harder than you think. I'm not used to being on this side of the microphone. I, you know, I'm doing it more now, but I'm usually just the guy clicking and behind the scenes making it sound good so i'm having to learn how to speak as well so <laughs> that's cool well and you should you should be on we should do an entire episode of my show with you because i want to know about all your experience on the road and doing live sound and and sort of how that applies to just you know audio production in general because i i was never a live sound guy i was always a studio guy and yeah and specifically i was more on the mi mixing in the studio not even i mean i've done some tracking but much yeah. more mixing so that's like right. my specialty there so that'd be a great episode if, if i would love that man let's do it yeah okay so yeah so at podcast movement i'll be there emceeing and i'll uh introduce you and uh oh uh quick question which i'm trying to surprise everyone with which is right. kind of not not working <laughs> uh what is what is your main microphone when you record what i am podcast? talking to you on now is my beloved sm7b i'm a huge sure fan and i've tried a lot of different things and i keep coming back to this microphone it's just awesome it you know it requires a lot of gain so you have to have a good preamp for it but i love this microphone Okay, cool. And so have you named your microphone? Have you given it a little pet name? <laughs> I need to do that. My wife is one of those people that names everything. Oh, really? And I need to get her help, I guess, to name my, my microphone because I do love it so much. <laughs> right. It's such, I, that's the question I thought of to try to surprise people. Did you name your microphone? Like, I didn't right. name my microphone. Who names a microphone? <laughs> <laughs> that's a dumb question, but that's the point. Yeah. All right. So, and we're also going to have to talk when you're on my show, we'll talk about clean feed because i know you're a big fan of clean feed which i'm i'm a fan of clean feed as well yeah um, and so uh i recently did a test between zencaster squadcast and ringer but i, I didn't yep. include clean feed in that test so i want to i'm gonna do and, and maybe you and i could do it marcus if, you, if you're yeah, up for it absolutely we can i'd love that do a test of all of them not only the three i mentioned which i kind of already did but yeah. we can do clean feed and there's a few others we can do as well and then we could do like a master comparison and make it like this blog post that's legendary. <laughs> that would be know. awesome. All right. Well, Marcus, thanks again, man. We'll see you in Orlando in August. I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait. Cool. All right, man. Have a good one. Next up on the technical track preview, Mackenzie Bennett. Last time I saw Mackenzie, we were at a restaurant called Egg Slut in Las Vegas, which is weird because Egg Slut is one of my nicknames for Chris Curran. Take it away, Chris and Mackenzie. <clears throat> All right. Coughing it out with Mackenzie. Is, that's the name of a new show. <laughs> oh, that's delightful. <laughs> oh, jeez. Hawking up a... Oh, wait. Never mind. <laughs> oh, jeez. We've already ruined this new show. Oh, Jesus. All right. Mackenzie Bennett is here. Directly from Ohio. Yes. To directly to what? Colorado? Colorado Springs. And so, okay, you at, at Podcast Movement in August, mm -hmm. you are going to be, wait, you're, you're going to be the, uh, wait, what do you call it? I'm the, the moderator. The moderator. <laughs> That's what it is. That fancy word. The person that sits there and asks the people with the information questions. <laughs> Right. Are you going to so so you're moderating a panel which is called Help mm -hmm. Us Help You Tech Support yes. Tips for Podcasters 
And on the panel is Dave Jackson, Mike Dell, and Shannon Martin. Yes. Now, are you going to like Lipson and Blueberry and Podbean? Got it. Now, are you going to be like really tough and like, you know, yell at them? Like if they go over time, you're going to be like, you're done. That's shut up. That wasn't the plan, but maybe it is now. <laughs> you so, all right. So you wait, how much tech support? Because you're you're with Blueberry. So you don't do you yes. do much tech support yourself at Blueberry? No, not a ton. I will answer as much as possible, but I am the person that typically is able to make the connection between what is the person that doesn't know anything about podcasting asking to the person in tech support who will be able to help them. <laughs> There's sometimes it. a divide there a little bit, or I just am able to provide a perspective of to a tech support person, this makes total sense to someone who doesn't have that experience or genuinely like no desire to learn it. This is what I understand it as. Got it. Yeah, you're kind of like, uh, so you do some, whatever support you can do, and then the rest you can, yes. you know who to give it, you know who to hand it off to. Yes, and it's mainly tech support that I'm able to provide based on how our service works and not necessarily the the deeper things in podcasting in general. Right. Well, yeah, yeah and of course you shouldn't be expected to, you know, to know all that. I mean, hardly anyone yeah, knows that's all that. my job. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So... All right, so Mike Dell's going to be there. I actually haven't, mm -hmm. well, talked to him yet, or Dave Jackson. I did speak to Shannon <laughs> Martin already. But okay. um, so, as far as giving tips, tech support tips, are you what? What are you guys going to focus on? Like, just you know, frequently asked questions, or are you going to cover different topics, or how's it going to work? Yeah, so we're mainly going to be covering topics that all of us see on a regular basis. And uh, just general ways for people to communicate what type of issues that they're having, um, what they like, anything that they've tried to troubleshoot themselves, uh, just kind of tips on how to make communication with tech support people easier in terms of getting your solution faster Got and it. in a more <laughs> enjoyable way. Because let's be honest. Most often with a lot of companies, if you're going to tech support, you're uh, you're already a little peeved. Right. <laughs> you just want to get through as easily and happily as possible. Right. Well, this is great. I just realized that I, I kind of have, uh, since I have you on right now, I kind of have tech support mm -hmm. on the call. So um, I want to ask you, Mackenzie, I posted my episode um, Four minutes ago, I don't see it yet in Apple Podcasts. Where is it? Where is it? I don't know where it is. Mackenzie, you got to help me. I don't know where it is. It's not showing up, Mackenzie. It's not showing up. I just put it uh, out, Mackenzie, four minutes ago. Chris, I think it's going to be okay. One, <laughs> because it's going to be a great episode. And two, <laughs> it's on your website, right? It's oh. totally on your website because you have your own website where you're hosting, you know, you're... You're posting your episodes along with every other directory, right? Well, so is that the most common complaint or the most common support ticket that, oh, I posted an episode and I don't see it yet? I don't know if it's the most common, but it is up there. It is okay. a true like miscommunication or misunderstanding that people have with podcasting. Right. Give it a minute. like Give, give something... Yeah. A second to show up on the internet. Give it four hours. I mean, that's that's what yeah. I... For some reason, that always stuck in my head. Like, three, four hours. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, and it's... No, I mean, it's, it's a good number. It's going to vary for sure, but that's a solid one to keep an eye on. And this is why everyone should subscribe to their own show. Right, and then see what... So that they have a handle on when they can expect these things to happen, but also have a realistic number in your head, like three to four, as opposed to four minutes. Right. So, all right. So Dave Jackson, Mike Dell, and Shannon Martin are on the panel with you Correct. that you're moderating. And Do you have any uh, dirt on any of these people that you want to air publicly right now? <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I do not. All right. I just, I mean, because if you did, it might be fun, but if not, that's okay. <laughs> I will say I have been on a panel with Shannon Martin before and she is lovely. Mike, you know, I've been working with him for quite a few years. So I'm pretty familiar with him. Dave, love you, Dave. Never been on a panel with you. 
we'll see how I moderate you. There you go. Are you going to come up with a list of wacky questions to ask them? Like just off topic, like weird questions just to throw them off? I think so. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to show this, you know, fun, real people and then get into the tech geeky side. There you go. I think that's Ask a good them like start. real personal questions and all that. All right. All right. Well, <laughs> it doesn't McKenzie... need to necessarily be the dating game. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That'd be funny. All right, Mackenzie Bennett, thank you. We'll look forward to seeing you at Podcast Movement in August and uh, we'll enjoy, uh, you know, I. I don't know if I'll have to find a way to come into your session and, and heckle heckle you and heckle the panel and maybe bring some other hecklers with me. You were totally invited for that. All right. And then, of course, I'll record it and put it online and, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're, you're good up. at that. So thanks for that. <laughs> oh, geez. Actually, you're not allowed to do that, uh, I don't think. But anyway, <laughs> thanks, Mackenzie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chris. See you at Podcast Movement. All right. See you. Next up on the technical track preview is the happiest podcaster on earth, Jody Mayberry. Jody Mayberry, how you doing, man? Oh my goodness, I'm doing <laughs> wonderful, but the good news is it's getting better. It's getting better, that's awesome. I love to hear that. We always have to be moving toward the future, a better future. That's all we can move toward, right? That's right, that's right. So you're going to be speaking at Podcast Movement as part of the technical track, obviously, and so uh, you're a marketing consultant, and you have a bunch of podcasts. So give us your quick bio. Quick bio. I used to be a park ranger who has become the happiest podcaster on earth. I currently have eight podcasts going, which start with the cleverly titled The Jody Mayberry Show. Nice. Uh, you can probably figure out how I named that one, but mm. I've got... a. Three shows related to Disney, including Creating Disney Magic that I do with Lee Cockrell. I've, so it it just really turned out to podcasting is really something special, something that's worked well for me, a way to get my voice out there and to partner with other people to help them get their voice out. So of those eight podcasts, only two are my own, The Park Leader Show, which is for park rangers, and The Jody Mayberry Show. The other six I do with or for other people. Nice. And so you're going to be speaking at Podcast Movement. The title of your session is Alternatives to Skype. So are you saying that Skype isn't the best, Jody Mayberry? (laughs) (laughs) Officially, what I'm saying is Skype is not the best for everybody. Nice. So for some people, it works. In fact, I still use it for several things because I love that I can call people's phones with it. And there are times, especially for the Park Leader Show, that's the only way to do an interview. A lot of park rangers don't even know what Skype is, so I have to call them on their office phone. And right. it works great for that. But you're not limited to Skype. There are alternatives. And when people are just starting out, they may not know what they are. And that's what we're going to dig into. That Yes, Skype is there. Skype works well for some things, but it's not your only option. There are alternatives, and some of them are fantastic. Right, so you're going to go through a bunch of alternatives. Uh, about how many do you think you'll present, or, or at least mention? There will probably be maybe five alternatives. One of them is what we're using today. This is this is a great option, and we're just going to cover the different alternatives and what they do and a little bit on how you can use them so people that are there at that track can say, oh, okay, Skype isn't working for me this is the option I want to try next. Or they may just say, okay, for what I'm doing, all right, Skype is the best option. Right. So that's good. So you're going to present a bunch of alternatives and then actually talk about how to use them too, right? Kind of so people can sort of get the flavor for the alternatives. And then if they like one or they want to go try one, then you'll you'll sort of help them how to get started, right? Basically. Yeah, that's right. I'm not just going to get up there and say, hey, sometimes Skype, doesn't work for everybody and consider using one of these others. We're going to mention them so you know what they are, you've heard their name, and then you will show you a little bit. I, I'm going to have somebody there kind of helping me on the putting things up on the screen so I can just get in front and do my show. So we're going to cover some of, some of them. Th- this is how it works. This is what you'll look at and why we like some of them, why we don't like some of them. But 
I don't want my in, my opinion to influence it too much. I just want to show what's there and how you can use it because even if I may not like a platform, it may work really well for somebody else. Right. Yeah, that that's a great way to put it because I also have tried many different alternatives to Skype and you know, I sort of uh you know, judge them technically, right? As far as like recording audio technically like which ones do it the best but there's also the user interface and there's also you know reliability and there's there's many different factors so this is going to be awesome and jody what is your main what is the main microphone you use for podcasting i've tried several different ones i always come back to the audio technica atr 2100 for the price and the it, it does everything I need it to do. It's what a seventy dollar microphone. I take two of them with me everywhere. It sounds great. Uh, I just love this microphone. And have you uh, named your microphone like you would name a pet? Do you have you named it? <laughs> oh man, you've caught me flat footed there because I. So when I, I mentioned a couple times already, I used to be a park ranger, and we we always named our guns. Every park ranger has a name for their gun. Oh. I don't know if they'd tell you that if you ask them. Oh. So I should have carried that over and named my microphone, but I I haven't now. Now the search is on. By the way, my gun's name was Libby, but my microphone has no name. So maybe Libby. we need to work on that. So wait a second, though. If someone asks a ranger what their gun is named, the the ranger wouldn't want to tell, wouldn't want to give it away? You know, I'm not sure. I don't know of a civilian ever asking a, a – because, you know, most people don't know your gun has a name. So no one ever asked me before. Interesting. <laughs> All right. Well, Jody, thanks for uh, giving us the little preview. We'll see you in Orlando, man. I look forward to it. Stop by and say hello. I can't wait to meet. And I'm, I'm, man, that's my favorite part about Podcast Movement, just meeting everybody that I can. It's so fun. Cool, man. Alexis Paris at Podcast Movement 2019. She'll be talking about great quality, low cost, and return on investment. Check her out at Podcast Movement in August and check her out with Chris right now. Hello, Alexis Paris. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Chris. Yeah, this is a nice little episode of all the technical track speakers for Podcast Movement in August 2019 in uh, Orlando, Florida, where it's supposed to it's supposedly going to be really, really hot. Alexis, are you prepared for that? Always, all the time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so your talk is called "Great Quality, Low Cost." Plus ROI. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, uh, give us a just a quick high level overview of what your what your session is going to be about. Sure. So, my session is for the beginner level. When I first started podcasting, I was looking for cost effectiveness for great quality because we want to put it on iTunes. We want to distribute it to the big names. So, I I thought about putting together a session that could help people learn about what tools they need to actually accomplish just that. So we'll be talking about, you know, the tech essentials that you need to have great quality to keep the cost low, but also to have a return on your investment as well. Because though you can do podcasting just because as a passion, I'm sure there will be people in the room that do it for a business as well. And so I'll give them some really cool, innovative, creative tips on how to do that too. Oh, that's cool. So it's a it's a beginner session, and this is really good yeah. stuff to cover because that's always the first question, right? Is like what what equipment do I need? And um, right, you get that a lot. Yes, exactly. Um, that's just like the biggest general question, like what do I need, right? And there's so many different parts that go into it, um, and there's so many options out there that you can choose. And so with my session, I kind of want to simplify it for people. So, they're, so that they're not overwhelmed, but they have a good variety of tools they can pick from to get started. So you cover hardware in terms of microphones and stuff. And do you also cover like software as well? Yes. I'll talk about like microphones, uh, hosting, video editing software, audio editing software. Um, that's really the tech equipment side, right? And then kind of what outlets to use to keep the cost low and then the ideas that people can implement if they want 
on how to bring money back in without Got increasing it. the budget. Got it. And when you say outlets, you mean like uh, like media hosting and how how to get their feed out into the world, right? Yes. Cool. Yeah, a lot there's a lot of choices now. Like when I started probably around seven years ago, or maybe even a little more than seven years ago, it, it seemed like there was only Blueberry, Libsyn, and maybe a few others. But now there's a lot more, right? Right. There's a ton. I think the newest one that people are really appreciating right now is Anchor. Um, because you can kind of hop on there for free. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but there's a lot of options now that can be so easy to get overwhelmed with. So I kind of kind of like chop it down to give a clear view of what you can do to get started. Right. Yeah. It didn't even dawn on me that you would probably talk about Anchor, but but you're, you're going to talk about Anchor, right? Yeah, I'll probably mention it. I did even that used to be one of my outlets that I distribute my podcast to. Um, so I know a little bit about it. I'll talk about it briefly, but not like so in depth because I don't that's not my main one that I use. But it's definitely an option for people. All right. Well, this is awesome. So if you know anyone, if, if anyone listening knows anyone who is going to be attending Podcast Movement and they're at the beginning, because there are a lot of beginners who attend these conferences. So this will be good for the beginner. So Alexis Paris, it's going to be really awesome to see you in Orlando and introduce you at Podcast Movement. So I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Super excited to meet you in person as well. All right. See ya. Bye. Another great addition to the podcast movement technical track is Mike Dell of Mike Dell's World. I just found out that he's not the same Mike Dell from Dell Computers. It makes sense now why he hasn't returned any of my emails to fix my PC. Anyway, welcome to Chris Curran and Mike Dell's World. So Mike Dell, what's up, my man? How's it going? It's going Haven't well. Seen you since since Vegas. I know, <laughs> since NAB. And now, uh, next time we're going to see each other is at Podcast Movement in August in Orlando, PM19, hashtag PM19, and you are on a panel which Mackenzie Bennett is uh, moderating, and the, you're on the panel with Dave Jackson and Shannon Martin. Um, how do you feel about that? What Do you want to sit next to Dave Jackson or sit further away from Dave Jackson? <laughs> no, no, no. You know, actually, what <laughs> happened was is Dave, Dave and I uh, came up with this idea as a joint episode of my podcast help desk and his uh, school of podcasting. Mm. And uh, we never could get it together. So uh, I thought, well, what the heck? Let's uh, put it in as a panel and uh, needed a moderator. So I asked Mackenzie if she'd put it in and she did. There you go. Cool. So yeah, the title of the session is Help Us Help You, Tech Support Tips for Podcasters. You know, and I, I actually talked to Mackenzie already. And, um, you know, tech support is one of those things people get, people can get a little nutty when they have that problem. Right, Mike? Oh, yeah, definitely. And, and you know, part of the problem is, is, you know, they'll say, oh, my podcast is broken. And that's all I'll get. Oh. And, you know, we want to <laughs> tell them, hey, you know, Here's some of the things you might want to add to your first message to tech support so that you don't have to have 20 messages back and forth. Right. Yeah, because cause that makes double work. So if someone sends you that, says, hey, my podcast is broken, what should I do? Like, you are going to have to email them back with, you know, six or seven questions. So now, so, I mean, I guess you could sort of script those six or seven questions and just paste it oh, into yeah. an email, but... Still, it's like more back and forth. Um, so you guys are going to be sharing uh, a bunch of tips, right? Oh, yeah. We've got a whole uh, list of things that uh, are a particular pet peeves for uh, myself at Blueberry, Dave at Lipson, and uh, Shannon at Podbean. So right, should be an interesting, you know, I'm sure each of us have different uh, different things that we have a lot of trouble with. You know, in, in our case at Blueberry, we're dealing with a lot of WordPress, PowerPress issues. Right. And, uh, you know, WordPress just adds a whole other level of uh, of support that's needed sometimes. Right. Yeah. And it's interesting when you say pet peeves for you guys, it's like because you guys, your goal is to help people quickly and to fix problems quickly. Like that's that's what you want to do, right? You want to get all the information and be able to diagnose it and fix it and email them back, boom, and look like a hero, right? That's what you guys want. 
Oh, yeah, definitely. We want to be able to answer your question, you know, first reply or maybe second reply if there's a little bit of information. But, you know, just having all the basics in the initial contact will go a long way to, you know, helping us help you. Right. Yeah, but so people, when they get, when there is a problem, though, not a lot of, well, some people, they don't relax and like think it through kind of thing. They just kind of knee-jerk reaction, quick email support. Hey, there's a problem. Help me. (laughs) Right. And a lot of times, uh, you know, there's a lot of common stuff that, you know, podcasters in general, especially new podcasters, don't understand how podcasting works. You know, the biggest one that I that I have and, and everybody else on the panel will have is, you know, people don't understand that podcasting is not a push technology. You don't push your podcast anywhere. It gets pulled by all these directories and your subscribers and whatever. And, you know, if you publish your episode to Apple or you publish your episode to your RSS feed, it's not going to be an Apple instantaneously. Right. And that's the hardest thing for people to understand. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, if they email support and it's toward the end of the day and we don't get to it, we come back the next day and we look and we say, well, yeah, it's there. Well, what's your problem? Right. You know? <laughs> so exactly. then they think we're crazy. <laughs> right, right. All right. Well, this is going to be a cool panel. I hope Mackenzie grills you like never before. <laughs> and Dave well, Jackson. She never has a pro- she never has a problem uh doing that anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Mike, Mike Dell from Blueberry, uh good talking to you and I can't wait to see you and everybody on the panel in Orlando in August at Podcast Movement. It's going to be awesome. I hope the air conditioning works. See you then. Ah! Totally. All right. All right, see you, brother. Yep. Up next is the star of Podcast Engineering Show, episode 127, Carrie Caulfield Eric. And yes, it's an episode. It's not a session, Chris. Anyway, she'll be speaking at Podcast Movement, but you don't have to wait that long. Take it away, Chris and Carrie. Okay. You're are you recording yourself locally? Yeah, yes, I am. Yeah. We're okay. Good. Did you did you you didn't capture my rant, did you? <laughs> I did. I did, but I will cut it out. I promise and delete it. <laughs> yeah, that's for private. And by the way, Carrie uh Caulfield Arik, I was planning on when we connected for this little quick little interview. I was trying to figure out a way to punk you like you guys punked me, but I couldn't figure out a way. The only thing I could think of was the moment we connected, I was just, without even saying hello, I was just going to be like, uh, so what's your talking to be about? <laughs> just <laughs> jumped right into it. <laughs> yeah, like, like not, not even hello or are you there? Just, so what's your talking about? Even, uh, uh, yeah, you could have done that. Say. That would have been like... That would have been funny. All right. So, Carrie, you are a speaker on the technical track at Podcast Movement in August 2019 in Orlando, and I will be emceeing your session and introducing you. So that's where I'm going to get my revenge. I just realized that. (laughs) 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 But you're going to be giving a talk called People Breathe, The Art of Editing an Interview. What are you saying, Carrie? Oh, yeah. That people that not every people can use some help with editing interviews. <laughs> <laughs> well, I uh, think that nobody should ever stop breathing, first oh. and foremost. Okay. I mean, obviously, if you can't, you know, if you have some sort of medical crisis, then you know, whatever. But <laughs> uh, don't do that on a podcast. Uh, so I'm tired of not hearing breaths on podcast interesting because they are beautiful we are humans we breathe and breathing can add context emotion it can add drama and it can really psychologically captivate a listener you know what yeah. what when babies are born we all cry or I hope you do, at their first breath. We are hardwired to have that connection to breathing. Right. So I don't think they should all be taken out of podcast interviews or podcast episodes. Right. I've only heard one or two episodes in my life where it was very apparent that they took out every single breath. 
and it it is it's like one of the strangest things you can listen to. It's just bizarre. <laughs> it really is. It really is. And I hear from podcasters, especially new podcasters who maybe aren't used to editing, um, that they hate the breathing. Mm. Like they absolutely hate it and they don't know what to do with it. And so that's something I'm definitely going to address in my talk. One so thing, if you want to hear... Oh, go ahead. No, one thing I tell students is go listen to the radio or go listen to the, the biggest pop songs on the radio. And just yeah. listen to the vocal. Listen to the person singing and and then listen for their breaths. And you know what you will hear? Because they use usually use so much compression in you know when they, they compress the lead vocals and stuff. The breaths are so loud. Like it right. you, you, once you focus on that for like a minute, you'll be like, "Oh my god, I can't, the breaths are like almost as loud as the words." But but when you listen to the song, you never notice it cuz it's natural. Right. Right, cuz we breathe all the time. I mean, it's part of living. Yeah. <laughs> so So everyone so, go do that. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Carrie. Oh no. So I was going to I was going to say go listen to She Podcasts. Um Elsie Escobar is a beautiful breather. <laughs> and <laughs> she probably never heard that before. Wow. Okay. <laughs> John Buckinus, who edits their podcast, does an amazing job with her breaths. They're just right. By the and way, they add it's, uh, so much. Because I asked them, it's Buchanus. Buchanus. Okay. Well, I only ever really read it. I know. So. It, that's a hard one. That's why I asked him. Because he is. actually, he's a, he's a graduate of podcast engineering school. So that's like on our first call, I'm like, dude, how do I say your last name? <laughs> <laughs> so he told me Buchanus. I yeah. like the sound of that yeah. too. I don't know. Buchanus. It sounds, it's now that I know how to say it, it sounds much better. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, what about his breaths on Sheep Podcasts? Or, well, wait, no, he's not you on know, Sheep Podcasts. I don't really... Well, he does. He does talk sometimes. I don't really oh. hear his, and I don't really hear Jessica's, but I notice Elsie's, and I always think, it, you know, I, like, get excited with hers. I get, you know, there's a lot of drama behind her breaths, and, you know, I think they're probably louder than everybody else's, but, right. you know, it's a good example that that's okay. That works for her really well. It right. works for the show really well you know you can tell when she's getting amped up because she goes <gasps> you guys wow <laughs> and you're like whoa dude right right just, but you know to pay attention yeah like silences the crowd that big in breath right oh I, right. there's a cat is that a cat <gasps> oh yeah sorry <laughs> oh that's okay is, wait is it is a meow technically considered breathing i'm not sure <laughs> meow. no that's like speaking i guess yeah yeah, yeah. Well, he's. I think he's responding to me, getting all, right. all excited. Well, listen, we could talk for hours about this. You are going to give a talk on this at Podcast Movement. So if people want to go to Podcast Movement, show up there. Uh, I'm going to introduce you, Carrie, and you're going to give a talk uh, uh, and cover a lot more about breathing and, and, and everything, I'm sure. So, uh, so yeah. everyone can check that out um, and just, just be prepared for a little uh, punking uh. action. Carrie, that's all I got to say. I'm just, oh, it's not well, like a war. To... I'm not trying to be devious or anything. I'm just. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to, maybe I'll have to talk to Emily and uh, <laughs> visit one of your, are you doing a session? Yes. <laughs> oh, no, no, you're going to get, oh, God. Anyway, for people who don't know what I'm talking about, if you go to, Go to Ka Carrie. You were on the show a few months ago, three, four months ago, and yep. we did a whole episode. You and I was great, and I told the story of how you, 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 with the help of Emily, punked me. So anyway, people can go check that out. But Carrie, awesome chatting with you. Real quick, we'll see you at Podcast Movement. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. Looking right. forward to it. Peace. <laughs> Bye. So we've reached the end of our list, and last but certainly not least is podcast luminary and new car owner, Daryl Darnell. This dude's team edits some of my favorite podcasts, like Congressional Dish and Talk Nerdy. If you want to see the full list, go visit him at propodcastsolutions.com. Enjoy this last discussion. See you at Podcast Movement 2019. And never forget, sound great! Looks like we're rolling over there. <laughs> Rolling everywhere. <laughs> Rolling down the river. Uh, Daryl <laughs> Darnell, 
you and Mr. Steve Stewart are doing a session at Podcast Movement called Five Steps to Building a Sought-After Podcast Production Company. Which, That's the rumor, yeah. Which is what you have. Well, it, I guess Steve Stewart has a, has a company too, and so do I, but you have a, a serious podcast production company, which is revered in the industry, if I might be so bold to say that, it's, although it's not a bold statement, it's just true. Um, and you've been working at it for a while, so... Uh, and you've been on my show before, too, so everyone can go back in the archives and find our old episode. Um, so Steve Stewart told me he had to twist your arm to to do this. <laughs> <laughs> he he did, and I have the scars on my arm to prove it. Um, <laughs> right? Steve can yeah. be vicious. Steve can, and he, he can also be very convincing. And I, I did have some reservations about doing it. I didn't want it to be one of those instances where I get on stage and bring a lot of attention to me and, oh, look at me and how successful I've been. And you, too, can be like me one day. I had no interest in doing anything like that. So we just needed to talk through it for a while, and he needed to keep asking me to even get me to consider it. And then once, once I thought, okay, let me at least consider it. And we talked about it, and and uh, it all worked out. And then we submitted the session, and it got approved. So we're we're both really excited about it now. Nice. And who would you say in the audience? What what type of audience member do you think will get the most from your presentation? I think the person who's going to get the most from this presentation is someone who is looking to make a full-time go at editing podcasts for other people. This session is not for someone who's looking for editing tips for their own podcast. There are other sessions for that, not this one. This, is the, this session is for someone who is, who is maybe in their corporate job like I was, dreaming of a day when they can work for themselves and become an entrepreneur, or someone who is already kind of doing the side hustle, or someone who's just starting out and is looking how to improve their business, uh, or even someone who's been doing it and they're doing it full time, but they're looking to take their production business to the next level. So all those people, but the thing that all those people have in common is that they are focused on doing audio production for other podcasters. They may do have their own podcast too, but we're talking about people who have or desire to have an audio production business for podcasters. Right. And so since you started, you've gone through all kinds of growth and you had to build up your team and stuff. So, so just, I mean, high level, what are some main concerns about building a, a successful podcast production company? Well, we'll talk about things like what what do you want your business to look like? In other words, are you a solopreneur and you just want to do help as many people as you're capable of helping? Are you looking to build a business like I did where we, you have other team members that either help you grow to a level that just a single person can grow to or can help with in, that have strengths that you don't have. So in other words, I don't like to write show notes. I have writers that I've brought on and, and Steve as well. Like he's got a whole bunch of people that helps him uh, with his business, you know, to, to do things that he is weak in or to do things that he's incapable of doing alone. But we're going to talk about all sides of that because some people don't want to manage people, right? That's the other side of that. When you get into adding team teammates, um, you've got to now be able to manage people. Otherwise, your client expectations don't get met and your own expectations don't get met. So we'll talk about things like that. Um, we'll talk about dealing with difficult clients, um, how to get clients. That's that's the number one thing. Steve has created a, uh, a, a Facebook group for podcast editors. It's like almost 4,000 members now, if I remember right. And that's the, probably the most common question we get in that group is how do I get clients? So we'll we'll definitely be looking at that as well. Yeah, those are all great and deep topics, right? Each one of those, man, you could talk for hours on each one of those. So, oh yeah. Um, but what I think is great about this session is that it's you and Steve who are, who both have production companies, and you specifically have really spent a lot of time growing your business and overcoming so many hurdles, and and also providing real a really great service and doing it in a just a a grassroots way, just a like 
common sense way, I might say. Like, meaning, I know some people who start companies and all they want to do, like, all they focus on is like optimizing systems and they just want to sell stuff and then they don't, it's like they don't really care about who's buying it or what their experience is. But I know you, I've known you for several years and, I, and you've again been on this show. And that's not how you treat your business. I mean, you treat each client as like, you just want to help them and make their show successful and make them sound good. And obviously the cool thing about that focus that you have and others have too, is that people love that. And that's how your business grows. And because I know people who like people who are in businesses in the podcast industry, it's just plain. It's, it's so easy to see that they're just in it for the money. And you could just smell it. And so someone like you is on the opposite end of the spectrum where you're just helping people. So I really, I really admire that, man. Uh, that means a lot from you. I, I do appreciate that. And yeah, I've seen, I've seen people come into the space um, early on even uh, who seem to just have a desire to create a business that would allow them to live on the beach <laughs> and live a certain lifestyle and be hands off, hire a bunch of VAs to run the business and they would just kind of be... The figurehead, or, or maybe even more involved than, than a figurehead, and th- those don't work for this, in my opinion. You got to be boots on the ground, uh, you front line with the clients, and so that's always been my approach. Um, and my approach isn't, you know, you can't make a carbon copy of my approach because my personality, my business background comes along with that. But I do, I do strongly believe that, yeah, you need to, if you're going to be successful, you have to be actively involved with your team, with your clients, first and foremost, um, and not be hands off. Otherwise, it's it's not going to be long term success. Right. So if you're listening to this, and you're interested in either starting or growing a podcast production company, definitely consider coming to Podcast Movement and and seeing Daryl and Steve's presentation. And here's the other thing. This is the coolest thing about big events like this. After their talk, how about you approach Daryl and say hello and and maybe chat with him? I'm sure he'd be happy to chat with you, right, Daryl? I'm I'm always happy to chat. And and we've had a booth at Podcast Movement every year since 2004. 15 every year but the first year i was there the first year but i didn't have a booth there got it and what's really cool is the last several years not the first year i think people were still trying to figure out who i was um but every year since then people have come by the booth who were audio editors who are edit- audio editors who, and they're in some you know some way in the journey there there's some they they're they're going along the path of trying to do what i do and they stop by the booth and say, okay, here's my questions I have, and p- can you please give me some advice? And I'm always happy to do that. And that's part of the reason why we're doing this session. Um, but I say that just to say, yeah, we'll be around. You know, After the session, if people still have more questions, um, we'll stick around, Steve and I will, or I'm always at the booth. So <laughs> I'm yeah, pretty awesome. easy to track down and, and love to chat with people about this sort of thing. Yeah, and that that's exactly why I mentioned that because you're you are that kind of guy who just like you're just a good guy who just you'll help people. If they have questions, you'll try and help. So all right, everybody. So we'll see you at Podcast Movement. Daryl Darnell, thank you so much. And uh, of course I'll be introducing you there too. What that'll be fun. So we'll see you in Orlando in August. Can't wait. Looking forward to it, man. Thanks, man. All right. Yeah. Podcast Movement is going to be so much fun. And if you attend Podcast Movement, if you can, if you can, you really should. It's just great for for so many reasons. Like not only just what you're going to learn if you attend some presentations, but like meeting everybody, developing relationships is the biggest one, right? Meeting people in the industry and all that. So anyway, if you're going, find me at our booth, Podcast Engineering School. Let's hang out. So my presentation is going to be titled... Advanced audio production, way beyond just removing ums, etc. And this is the description right here. Want to learn a bunch of expert tricks you can use to make your podcast sound professional? There are concrete reasons why some podcasts sound better than others. Learn what the pros already know. You will learn how to quickly train your guests before recording to ensure a clean recording. How to use plugins, EQ, and compression. How to mix the hosts, guests, and music so they sound great together. Editing tricks, 
and the mastering step. So I'm psyched about my talk. It's going to be great. So again, the links to... Oh, there's a ton of links in the show notes to all the speakers and their presentations, as well as Podcast Engineering School and the Podcasters Lounge. Also, have fun exploring previous episodes of this show. Like I said, I've talked to many podcasters about their equipment and workflow, and we really get pretty technical. That's what this show is all about. So if you're not into technical stuff at all, then then don't listen. But if you're into even slightly into the technical aspects of production, then you could listen and learn a lot. Plus, we have a lot of fun. So, uh, And if you ever need help with your technical production, please reach out to me. You know, I'm here to help. And so if you have a question or, you, or something bothering you, you need a solution, please let me help. You can email me or just contact me through social media, whatever. All right. Well, thank you for listening. Adios. See you next week and see you at Podcast Movement 2019.